talk about ERC-20 misbehaviors. So how, as you know, almost every project in the ecosystem uses ERC-20s, and there are a lot of issues that might happen with that. So we're going to try avoid that um, with this presentation. So I'm Sergi. I work at Consensus Diligence as a security auditor. So let's 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 dive into ERC-20. I, I hope everybody knows what that is, but let's just remind it that it's like the most common ERC, it's the most token, the most common token standard with the like minimalistic uh, functionality. You have only uh, only what you need: transfers, approved to transfer from you, like check balances, and like the the most uh, useful things for you. Um, so, but there are different ERC20 extensions that, that people are making, like uh, ERC223 or ERC777 that has callbacks to receivers, senders, or just random contracts, uh, and uh, different other options how you can do callbacks. Also, like lots of security tokens, uh, the most um, popular lately was like ERC1400. They allow you to do like partitions, lock in part of the funds for vesting, uh, make KYC, whitelisting, anything. So it's like huge frameworks with, with many modules. And a bunch of custom implementations with mini, like Minimi with, with history of balances. You can easily clone the token and uh, like create a new smart contract with the same balances in, in, at some point in history. Uh, some tokens with a proven call functionality, so we can approve and call some functions that makes transfer from in uh, in the same transaction. Some tokens are just controlled by, <laughs> centrally controlled by some authority. It can be stopped or transferred or anything. So, like a lot of a lot of different custom implementations might be here. Uh, before I dive into into common issues, like these issues are mostly relevant for for projects that are working with with different different kind of random tokens like exchanges, uh, investment funds, they, they try to invest in different tokens. Sometimes they are whitelisted, sometimes they just do anything. If you're working with like your own simple ERC-20, that might not be that dangerous for you. Uh, so like the most tricky uh, and interesting attack that I see in ERC-20 is reentrancy. Uh, just to remind what reentrancy is, like Gonzalo just told a little bit about it. Uh, but this is like example for, for tokens. So you see three functions, uh, transfer from, make trade, and token to send. So they're located in different contracts. Um, so like the attack flow is simple. It's, it's pretty simple. This is like exchange uh, example. So sender makes a trade by calling uh, make trade function of the exchange. Inside of it, token transfer is happening. So uh, inside of this token transfer, if this is, for example, ERC-777, uh, there is a callback function to, to the sender. Um, after that, sender can make one more tr trade by calling make trade function of the exchange. So basically, you can make one more trade before first trade is finished, and you can do it with an alt price, for example, if it's automated pricing, or do a lot of things that are not intended to be. Uh, there are also different types of reentrancy for tokens. Um, for example, uh, depending on who is who can do this this reentrancy attack. So this is either the sender of the token or receiver or some third party contract like like KYC provider or something like that. And the second criteria is like when it can be used. It can be used either before or after valid transfer, which is also important because like if you're making um, token transfer as the as the last line of your function and it's already made, then reentrancy wouldn't really do anything. It's like almost function is almost over. Um, interesting example of, of this this kind of attack was with Uniswap. So this is like very famous exchange that maybe you all probably know. Um, it's it's totally automated. It basically the previous example was showing a Uniswap attack, but with different function naming. But the idea is is pretty much the same. So. Uh, this, 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 this kind of exchange stores equally ETH and tokens in its smart contracts. Uh, and it was interesting, it was already live on the mainnet, so it's kind of hard to, to migrate to new versions. So this bug is still happening with ERC that allows some kind of reentrances. Uh, basically, ERC-777 is not supported by Uniswap for that reason. Um, so because of they don't have reentrancy protection, you can do um, one more trade inside previous trade with the old price 
basically having better and better price over over the rentancy, then you can do tr make it trade back and just earn free money out of it. <clears throat> so what do you do with rentancy in, in, in tokens? As in any other place, you just use Open Zeppelin's rentancy guard, which is pretty good right now. Um, you can use non-entrant modifier, and after later updates, uh, it become more cheaper. Because uh, recently it was like 10, 10,000 gas for 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 two storage uh, uh, store functions. Now it's got cheaper. Formula is pretty complex, but it it is cheaper. Um, but also, you make sure that you only use this non reentrant modifier where it's um, where reentrancy is not intended, because with some multi-sig wallets or voting contracts, you can actually <laughs> rent want to to have the reentrancy. Um, and and also make sure that uh, rent non reentrant modifier is um, is called in uh, every function that is relevant, not only in functions that uh, inside of which you can do reentrancy, because you can from the function you can do reentrancy and call another function, which you might consider it safe, but it's not because it also might change state and make some unintended behavior, which lead to random random results. Even if you even if you know that um, that even you make sure that reentrancy is not an issue. Um, for some reason, either you add reentrancy uh, protection or something, you still need to understand that when you do the token transfer, it's not enough to just have enough balance and, and permissions, uh, like approvals to, to do the transfer. Transfer can still fail for many, many different reasons. Uh, for example, your user or even your exchange or anything can be blacklisted uh, or, or or some other KYC, KYC reason why you cannot use these tokens. For example, USDC can blacklist anybody and you need to be prepared for that. Um, some tokens can be just locked for vesting or for some other reasons. Uh, sometimes tokens can be really gas costly and if you if you make multiple transfers in the same functions, it sometimes might also run out of gas. So even if you limit it to like few 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 things, it might still be pretty pretty expensive. Um, and you know Lots of tokens are pretty much upgradable. Uh, maybe not tokens, but as you see in this example, controller is like separate contract that approves some transfers, and it's usually upgradable by the owner. So, what do you need to do to to keep safer, to to make it safer? Um, you can isolate all of your transfers uh, to not to do for loops, avoid batch trans batch transfers. So, if you have transfers in a for loop, one of it might fail, and it can block all of your pipeline and just maybe block the contract, freeze funds. Uh, so basically just use pattern, pull pattern for all the possible token withdrawal wherever, wherever you can do it. Um, one more interesting issue is balance overflow. So you would usually expect that um, total supply is not overflowing. And, and if, if, you, if that happens, if balance is more than you int to, to 56, um, that usually means that token is either malicious or broken or, or both, and this token's price would, would most likely be like, worthless, it would be zero. But still, if you're working with lots of different tokens, for example, like in, in this example, you're assigning awards and you have a for loop to, you're not making transfers, so you already took care about my previous uh, recommendation. You do not do transfer, but you store balances so people can withdraw them. But Sometimes people still do it in, in a batches like that. And if one of the token is broken, you, this, this line of code will just revert because safe mass add would, would revert because of the overflow. And because of that, you might just freeze your pipeline and like all these tokens that should be assigned, they are locked forever and might be lost. So this is not a good behavior and possible remediations would be either just ignore safe mass and allow overflows. So this is um, not a traditional advice <laughs> because we usually we usually advise you to use safe mess and just not allow any overflows. But sometimes it's it's the, the easiest choice how to how to fix it. Or you can sometimes store balances in two uint variables uh, to allow like much much bigger values. But that's like a huge huge um, hu huge cost of doing that. Um, also. This 
was an interesting issue uh, in the past that sometimes uh, some tokens are just not ERC20 compliant. So the, the original implementation should return, like every transfer, transfer from should return true. Um, but there are some tokens uh, that just doesn't do it. As you can see, the late last function is a wrong implementation of, of token transfer. For example, Binance token is like that, and there are like hundreds of tokens that also have these implementations. And uh, the thing is that people, how people use it, like usage function that you see here, uh, how people use it, it's, um, it will just revert. Uh, it wasn't a problem initially, that's why we have so many tokens, because b b uh, before one of the hard forks, uh, it was fine, it was always returning true and nobody noticed it, but after one of the hard forks, uh, uh, like some, something in EVM changed and now you basically always have false. Um, so yeah, uh, make sure that uh, if, you, if you want to work with these kind of tokens, you can check if it's returning value or not and, and work, work this out. If not, you can just also ignore it, but, um, but yeah, should you be aware of it. Uh, if you're deploying your own token, uh, so sometimes people want to uh, try to do your C777 tokens and make something more complex, uh, but you need to also understand that some of the major projects might not just support it uh, because they have bugs that do not do, do not uh, approve any kind of reentrancy. Uh, also, consider making reentrancy protection inside tokens. So some projects are doing that. If they're having too complex code, uh, so they're just having reentrancy protection inside, it doesn't really matter if, it's, if, it's, if, if other projects that are using it have this protection or not. Um, also make sure that gas cost is optimized because in, in many different projects, people assume that transfers are pretty cheap and they do it in batches still. And if you want these tokens to be traded, like this should be, uh, major point of your attention. And again, make sure it complies to RC20. Uh, um, yeah, if you have any, any, any kind of questions, contact us. So yeah, question time. Yeah. One, two, three. Cool. Thank you very much.